and I'll do that now. And what we're going to do is we're going to give the lambda calculus an operational semantics, and it's a small step semantics, we call it a reduction semantics. The reductions are of the form that an expression E reduces to another expression E prime. And we can think of this as a single computation step. Um, there are very few uh, transition rules, or as we call them here, reduction rules, in our semantics. The only uh, central rule is that of beta reduction. And the beta rule uh, describes how we evaluate an application when uh, E1 in the application is an abstraction. Uh, so if we have an abstraction, lambda x E1, and then we apply this to E2, what happens is that we substitute x by E2, we substitute x by E2 within the body E. So that's what happens. We, inside the body E1, we replace x by E2. Now this is parameter passing as we as we know it. If we think of this as a function call, we call this function with this actual parameter, and the actual parameter substitutes for x inside uh, the body of the function. Uh, and that is really just call by name. A sub-expression for which a reduction is possible we'll call a redex. And if the, sub, the reduction that can happen is a beta reduction, we'll call it a beta redex. Every now and then I'll use the word redex, and so now you know what it means. There are two other reduction rules, and they're the ones that tell us that if we have a sub-expression, then reduction can happen within the sub-expression, but only if uh, the expression that we're looking at is an application. If we have E1, E2, and E1 can reduce to E1 prime, then this expression can reduce to E1 prime, E2, and similarly if E2 in the application can reduce to E2 prime, then E1, E2 can reduce to E1, E2 prime. Um, so this means that we can reduce in a subterm of an application, but we cannot, in fact, underneath an abstraction, because there are no rules for that. Here's a a tiny example of, an, of a reduction to show you what's going on. So um, here is lambda x, lambda x, y, x, lambda y, y, lambda z, and this is a redex. We can see that we can, we can use the beta rule here, and since we can, by the other two rules, we can reduce in any part of an application, and remember this is an application, this is E1, and this is E2. Then we can reduce in here. We use the beta rule here, and we get that. We substituted this y by this term, and this is what we got. And ah, we have a beta redex again. And we can reduce that to this. And again, we have a beta redex. Here's a beta redex. We substitute again. And now we cannot continue any further because we cannot uh, reduce underneath an abstraction. So that's as far as we get here. Now, here's another example of a reduction. And this shows us why we need to be very careful when we define substitution. Um, here we have a beta redex, here's an abstraction, and here's something that we can apply the abstraction to. If we were just naive when we substituted, we would substitute this for that y, and we would get this. But there is a problem here, because now we're confusing that x here, this x is free, with that x in here. So this would now be captured by that, and that's a mistake. What do we do? We, of course, rename the bound variable. We perform an alpha conversion. This x here, now we call that z instead. And 
this then becomes that if we replace x by z. We replace that x by z. And then everything goes fine. We can perform the beta reduction and we get lambda z, z, lambda y, dot y, x. And there's nothing more we can do now. So that's very simple. Um, and you're, of course, wondering now, what's this all got to do with Haskell? Well, Haskell uh, is much richer than the simple, simple lambda calculus that we've just seen. But there is a simple way of, of dealing with that. What we simply do is we introduce a set of library functions or constants, as we call them. So we, if we do that, then the formation rules of our lambda calculus are amended a little bit. We have, as, as an, an, an additional feature, we have the constants that belong to the set lambda con. And that's really all we need. Haskell is simply a version of the lambda calculus with a very large set of constants. A functional programming language like Haskell or, or Scheme or what have you is really just an applied lambda calculus with a large set of constants. In our semantics of the applied lambda calculus, we simply add one or more reduction uh, actions for each constant which we introduce. Suppose we want to have natural number constants and the addition function, then we would say that the set of constants would be the set of natural numbers and the function symbol plus, and then we just add the action that if we take plus, apply it to n1, and then apply it to n2, then we get n, where n is the natural number that is the sum of n1 plus n2. And um, therefore we can simply see Haskell as a very elaborate syntactic sugar for a very particular applied lambda calculus. That's really all there is to Haskell. Um, in Haskell, we can actually see that we have the lambda calculus inside. We can directly see application because we use the same syntax for application as we do in the lambda calculus. We have lambda expressions as well. We have lambda abstractions, uh, lambda x uh, dot e, and we can write them as backslash x arrow e. Um, so we have the lambda calculus within Haskell. So this also means that um, just as in scheme we have uh, anonymous functions. In Scheme we would write lambda x e. In Haskell we write this instead.